In today's video, we're going to discuss how to evaluate expressions. So variables can be replaced with any value. So in this expression, x and y are the variables, and we can replace them with any numerical value that we like. Typically, it would be given to us. Given an expression and a replacement value, you can evaluate or simplify the expression. We do not solve expressions. You can only solve equations and inequalities. You can evaluate or simplify expressions. Okay, so usually you'll see a problem given to you. In this case, we have 5a minus 6. And then we have the definition of the variable. In this case, a is equal to 7. So you replace all the variables with the numerical values. So in this case, we're replacing a with 7. We rewrite the expression with parentheses in the place of the variable and we substitute the given value inside the parentheses. Evaluate and make sure you document all of your thinking. Please note, there are no equal sign here for a reason. Expressions do not contain equal signs, so we do not write an equal sign except for when we're defining the variable. So a couple of examples here. First example, we have 5g plus 6 minus 7g, so we are going to replace the g with a negative 8. So we have 5 times negative 8, plus 6 minus 7 times negative 8. No equal sign, and then we follow our order of operations. 5 times negative 8 is going to be negative 40, plus 6 minus 7 times negative 8. So we're multiplying from left to right. The next step, we're going to multiply here. Negative 40 plus 6 minus 7 times negative 8 is negative 56. So if we get rid of this double sign here in algebra, we really want to try to eliminate any time we have double signs. So we have negative 40 plus 6 minus a negative the same as adding a positive, so plus 56. Negative 40 plus 6 is negative 34 plus 56. And then at any point you want to use a calculator to back yourself up just to double check your math, you can. I'm going to do that in this case, so negative 34 plus 56 gives me a positive 22 as my final answer. Okay. Next example, I have 8c plus 9, and I'm going to replace c with a negative 10. So I have 8 times negative 10 plus 9. Notice I'm substituting in with parentheses around the number. Very important, especially when you have a negative sign. This tells you that this is a negative 10, not 8 minus 10. So 8 times negative 10 is negative 80, and then negative 80 plus 9 is a negative 71 for my final answer. Last example on this page, I have d over 2 minus 3. I'm going to replace the variable d with the number 4. So 4 over 2 minus 3. 4 over 2 is 2, and then 2 minus 3 is negative 1. We're going to move on to the next page where our examples get a little bit more challenging. Quick reminder here, when you substitute, always put the number in parentheses. This will help you simplify the expression, especially with negatives. So again, we're reminded of that. All right, example one, I'm going to plug in a negative 3x for x and a negative 2 for y. So I'm substituting in in parentheses, negative 3 squared, y is negative 2, x is negative 3 minus negative 2. And it's all right to have those nested parentheses or parentheses inside parentheses, no problem. Again, important to plug in with the parentheses because like we talked about in a previous video, negative 3 squared with a squared on the outside is very different than negative 3 squared with no parentheses. Quick reminder, negative 3 squared written without parentheses is the opposite of 3 times 3, which would give you a negative 9. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9. So again, parentheses are important. So we know here for order of operations, we're going to do the exponents first. So we have, um, well, actually we should do the parentheses first. So we have negative 3 minus negative 2. I'm going to go ahead and write that a little bit cleaner because we have that double sign, minus a negative. It's going to be negative 3 plus 2. 
So inside the parentheses, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And then I'm going to do my exponents, negative 3 to the second power. We already said that was 9. And then I can just multiply. So negative 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. Negative 18 times negative 1 is a positive 18 for my final answer. Okay. Number 2, I have 4 plus b over 6 squared minus c, replacing b with 6, replacing c with 1. So I have 4 plus b is 6 divided by 6 squared minus c is 1. So inside the parentheses, I can do this division. I have 4 plus 1 squared minus 1. And then we do my exponents. 1 squared is 1, so 4 plus 1 minus 1. And then I add and subtract from left to right. So 4 plus 1 is 5. And then 5 minus 1 is 4. Last example on this section, we have some mixed numbers, so we want to go ahead and convert those into improper fractions first, just like we talked about in the last lesson. So x is actually going to equal, I hold my negative sign, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, 7 halves, and it's going to be negative. y is going to be 1 times 5 is 5, plus 2 is 7 fifths, and z is just going to stay negative 6. So for z, I'm plugging in negative 6 minus x is negative 7 halves, negative 7 halves minus y is 7 fifths, and then I'm adding a negative 6 to that. My first step, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I don't like having that double sign here. So I have negative 6 minus negative 7 halves negative 7 halves minus 7 fifths, and plus the negative is the same as minus 6. We can also drop the parentheses around that first one. Again, that's something that comes with the practice, kind of makes it look a little bit cleaner. Okay. All right, now I can start using order of operations. I'm going to work the parentheses from the inside out. So my first job here is to evaluate inside the parentheses, negative 7 halves minus 7 fifths. I'm going to grab a different color here, and I'm going to kind of do some work off to the side. And let's see if I can find one that doesn't look close to blue. Let's go with pink. All right. So negative 7 halves minus 7 fifths. My first step is to find a common denominator. In this case, it's going to be 10. Okay. 5 times 2 is 10. So I'm going to multiply by 5. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. 5 times, oops, wow, I really copied that wrong. That should be a 7 there. 5 times 2 is 10. 7 times 2 is 14. So I have negative 35 tenths minus 14 tenths. I'm just going to double check that really quickly. 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. Minus 5 times 2 is 10. 7 times 2 is 14. Subtract the denominator, so I have, or the numerators. So I have negative 49 over 10. All right, so I can replace that. I might just kind of bubble this off here so I don't get confused. So we're going to replace this with this. It gives me negative 6 minus negative 7 halves times negative 49 over 10 minus 6. Next step is to do the multiplication. So I'm going to multiply negative 7 halves times 49, negative 49 over 10. And again, I'm going to get a different color and kind of work off to the side here. So negative 7 times negative 49. I'm going to use my calculator for that. And I get 343. So actually, I guess I can do it all underneath. Negative 6 minus 343 over 20, and I'm going to subtract 6 from that. Okay. Again, I'm going to need a common denominator, so that's going to be 20th. Come up here. Negative 6 minus 343 over 20 minus something over 20. 
My 6 over 1, since it's a whole number. 1 times 20 is 20. 6 times 20 should be 120. Okay, subtract my numerators. So I have a negative 6 minus 343 minus 120 is 223 over 20. Again, I'm going to put this over 1 and create a common denominator to finish up my subtraction. So everything's going to be 20ths again. 1 times 20 is 20. 6 times 20 is negative 120. So I have negative 120 minus 223 over 20. And that's going to give me negative 343 over 20. But that can be simplified, I believe. So if I cross simplify, one, oh no, I can't because this is not multiplication. So my final answer is going to be negative 343 over 20.